Welcome back to another Python Pygame tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our snake game. In the last video, we created the classes and the objects for our game, and we drew those on the screen. So from before, this is where we got to. We have the three different classes, and then for now, we drew two of those on the screen. What we're going to do in this video is work on making those objects move on the screen. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and continue with our game. In this video, we're going to be starting under the while loop. And what we're going to do first is set up movement controls for the snake object. The way that we're going to move this object is by changing the X and the Y position. So we're going to start off by saying snake dot rect dot X, which will be the Y position of the object. And we're going to say plus equals. So we're going to be adding to this value. And what we're going to be adding to this value is snake dot DX. For the y position, we're going to do something similar. We're going to say snake dot rect dot y. This is going to be plus equals. So just like before, we're adding to this value. And what we're adding in this case is going to be snake dot dy. The reason we're doing this is going to make more sense in a second. So once we get a little bit more code done, then I'll stop and I'll explain what's going on. What we're going to do next is we're going to say key is equal to pi game dot key dot get underscore pressed. So what this is going to do, it's going to store whichever key is currently being pressed into this variable called key. After that, we can check to see which key is being pressed by using if statements. So we're going to say if key square bracket pi game dot uppercase k underscore and then we're going to start off with the left key. So we're going to say left with all caps. We're going to close the square bracket and put a colon. So if the left key is being pressed, then what we want to do is say snake dot DX is going to be equal to snake dot speed. So this value right here, speed and also the DX are values that we defined in the snake class. So if you go up to the snake class, you can see that we have a score and also a DX. So these are the values that we're referring to. So what we're doing here is we're going to set the snake's DX value equal to the snake's speed. So what it's doing up here, it's taking the snake's current X position, and it's going to add this value right here. And this value is going to be equal to 10. P is the snake.speed is equal to 10. So if we run the game, let's go ahead and see how this looks. So if I press the left key, I see that it's moving, but it's moving in the wrong direction. So that lets me know that instead of positive snake speed, I need negative snake speed. So I can just put a minus sign in front of it, and we'll try it again. So now if I press the left arrow key, my object moves to the left. Let's go ahead and continue now with the right arrow key. So what I'm going to do is just copy these two lines right here, and paste it down below. This time we're going to be setting it up for the right arrow key, so I'm going to change left to right. And for this part, since negative snake speed moves the object to the left, if I want to move the object to the right, I need positive. So I'm just going to get rid of the minus sign, and then we can try it out. So now I can move the object to the left, and also to the right. Now let's go and set up the up and the down arrow key. So I'm going to copy these two lines, and paste them down below. I'm going to change it from left to up, and then from right to down. Since we're talking about up and down movement, that's going to be a change in the Y. So I'm going to change this from DX to DY, and then from DX to DY. OK, so let's go ahead and try it out and see if all the keys are working. When I press the up arrow, the object moves up. And when I press down, it moves down. Let's go ahead and try the other keys and see if it's working. And I can see when I use the left and right arrows, I have diagonal movement. So let's go and see what we can do to fix that. So what I want to do is whenever I press the left or the right arrow key, I only want to change the X part of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say snake dot dy is equal to zero. I'm going to copy this and paste it under the right key. And then I'm going to paste it under these two as well. But for the last two, I'm going to change it from dy to dx. 
So when I'm pressing either the up or the down arrow, I only want to change the Y, and I want the X to stay the same. So now if we run the code, we can try it out again. I can go up, I can go down, and when I press the left and right arrow keys, it just moves in that direction. All right, so that sets up movement for the snake. So let's go and work on some collisions now. So whenever the snake runs into the food object, we can have the food object move to a different part of the screen. Before we move on, I'm gonna add a comment for the section of code that we just wrote. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say hashtag and then snake movement. Okay, and down below the snake movement is where we're going to define the different collisions that are gonna happen in the game. So let's start off with the comments. We'll say hashtag and then collisions. The first collision that we're gonna define is between the snake object and the food object. We're gonna do that by saying if snake dot rect dot collide rect. And then inside the parentheses will be the other rectangle that we're gonna be checking for a collision with and that'll be food dot rect. So whenever the rectangle from the snake collides with the rectangle from the food object, what we wanna do is move the food object to a new location. And we're gonna do that by starting with the food object. And then inside the food object, we define that other function, which we called move. And before we add bombs onto the screen, let's go ahead and just check to make sure this part is working. So what I'm gonna do is move the snake object over to the food object and see if the food object moves to a new location. And we can see whenever the snake runs into the food item that the food item teleports to a new location. Let's go ahead and add to this collision so that in addition to moving the food object, we also create a bomb. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna say bomb is equal to the bomb class then we're gonna set the bomb's location. So we're gonna say bomb.rect.x, and this is gonna be equal to snake.rect.x, and we don't want it to appear directly on top of the snake, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say plus and 50. For the y part, we're gonna say bomb.rect.y, this is gonna be equal to snake.rect.y, let me go and change this from a comma to a period. So just like before, we're gonna say plus and 50. You can play around with this right here. If you want it to maybe appear in a random location in the game, you can do that. Or you can adjust it to something else, just depending on how you want the bombs to appear. Okay, so once we created the bomb, we wanna add it to the bomb group, which we're gonna do by saying bomb underscore group dot add. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to add that bomb object. And the last thing we're gonna do for this collision is whenever the snake runs into the food item, we wanna add one to the score. So we're gonna say snake.score is plus equals one. So we're gonna take the current value for the score and add one to it. For now, the score is not gonna display on the game. We're gonna do that a little bit later. For now though, let's go ahead and check to make sure our bombs are appearing on the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna run into the food object. And when I do that, I see that a bomb object has appeared. And whenever I touch that food object, more and more bombs appear. Right now though, if I run into one of these bombs, nothing happens. So the next collision we're gonna do is between the snake object and the bomb. So to check collisions between the snake and the bomb objects, what we need to do is loop through the bomb group to see if there's a collision between the snake and any bomb in the group. So to do that, we're gonna use a for loop. So we're gonna say for bomb in bomb group. Inside this for loop, we're gonna say if bomb.rect.collide.rect. And then we're gonna say parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we're gonna be checking for collisions with the snake rectangle. So we'll say snake.rect. And what we're gonna do for now is we're just gonna close the game by saying run is equal to false. So let's go and run the game and check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna collect a couple food items and then run into one of the bombs. And we see that we have an error, so what I did is I forgot to capitalize false. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So for false, it should be a capital F. So let's go ahead and run the game and try it out one more time. 
So I'm going to collect the food object and then run into the bomb. And we can see when we ran into the bomb that it closed the game because it set run equal to false. In the next video, we're going to set it up so that when the player runs into the bomb, rather than closing the game, it's going to go back to the start menu. For now, though, we're going to finish up this video by displaying the score on the game screen. So to do that, we're going to go up to the redraw function. And right above the section where we draw the sprite groups, we're going to add a new section. I'm going to call this one score. And what we're going to be doing in this section is actually displaying the score onto the game. So to do that, we're going to start with the font. We're going to say font is equal to pygame.font.systemfont. Dot dot system font. And then we're going to put parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we're going to put two different things. We're going to put the font style and also the font size. So for now, I'm just going to pick a random font. And then we'll choose a random size just to see how it looks. So we'll choose 24 to start with. After the font, we're going to say score is equal to font.render. Inside the parentheses, we're going to start by saying score. We're going to put a colon and then a space. We'll close out the quotation marks. And then we're going to join this with the actual score, which is going to be the string version of snake.score. Next, we're going to say comma and false, and then comma and the color of the text. So for now, I'm just going to make the text black. After that, we're going to say score rect, so a rectangle for the score, and this is going to be equal to score dot get underscore rect. Then we're going to set the center of this rectangle by saying score rect dot center and this is going to be equal to with floor division 2 comma and 50 and we're going to put this in parentheses so by setting the center of the rectangle this is the position on the screen so for the x part we're going to put it in the middle and then for the y part we're going to put it a little bit below the top of the screen by saying 50 now to actually draw this on the screen we're going to say when dot b l i t and then what we're going to be drawing is the score at the score rectangle okay let's go ahead and run the game and check it out so now we see with our game we have a score with the score of zero and then every time my player runs into the food item he collects one for the score And like I said before, in the next video, we're going to be setting up the two different screens so that when the player runs into one of the bombs, instead of closing the game, it's going to go back to the start menu. All right, so I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one. <laughs>